Hi, I'm, hi, I'm Ashley Ross. I'm an associate professor here at Northwestern Pineberry School of Medicine, uh, and I'm a urologist here that primarily treats prostate cancer. You know, I'm happy to talk about some of our, our work that's actually come into clinical action that has to do with how we assess men for whether or not they need a prostate biopsy. Um, as many of you are aware, for years, it used to be that an elevated PSA, which is a blood test, uh, would take you towards a prostate biopsy. But now um, there's good evidence that we need to do things in between. The pro PSA is prostate specific antigen, but it's not prostate cancer specific. So how do we select the people with PSAs that are elevated who need to undergo a biopsy versus those who do not? And also how do we optimize that biopsy? Well, there's been a lot of data over the years that have strongly suggested that MRI prior to biopsy should be the only standard of care for patients where it's amenable, meaning that they don't have a pacemaker, for example. And there's other things we can do, however, to even limit whether or not they need to get the MRI or not, or after they get the MRI, whether they should have a biopsy or not. In our practice, we use a blood test called the Prostate Health Index for men with elevated PSAs to help us with decision-making regarding getting a MRI or going towards biopsy inevitably. For men, they have a prostate health index that's still of concern. They will then get an MRI, and the MRI is read by the radiologist, and it looks inside the prostate to determine whether or not prostate cancer may be present. The radiologist gives it a score called a PIRAD score. The higher the score, the scale goes from one to five, the more chance that prostate cancer may be present. But then for the provider and for the, um, for the, for the patient, how do we put together all this information? The initial, initial PSA, the prostate health index if they got it, the MRI findings about the size and shape of the prostate and about the lesions, so areas of suspicion in the prostate, uh, that get a PIRADS score. Well, our team has developed and published on and now made available to patients and providers a, um, a risk calculator to tell you what's the chance that prostate cancer may be present after you get your MRI and you have your blood test information. So this is our Polsky Urologic Cancer Center um, Institute website. And what you could do is you can go to this website and under the website, if you go down to disease states, um, you can look at prostate cancer. If you click on that, it takes you to another page where if you scroll to the bottom, you see the My NM, um, NM Risk Calculator, which is My Northwestern MRI Risk Calculator. And if you click on this link, it will then take you to a page which has our risk calculator for the detection of clinically significant prostate cancer. And here the provider or the patient can put in their variables and then determine what's their risk of not just having any cancer, but what we think is clinically significant prostate cancer. This means a, either a favorable intermediate risk prostate cancer or higher, or the chance of an unfavorable intermediate risk prostate cancer or higher. So let's just do that one time. Say the patient had a prostate health index available and the prostate health index was 30 for its value. The patient's PSA coming in was five. The prostate size on the MRI was 70 grams. It was a 60 year old patient. The patient had a MRI that was a PIRADS three which is equivocal, and they were non-African-American, then the risk of clinically significant prostate cancer is about 7%. The risk of cancer that we really care about only about 1.4%. And a lot of these patients will opt to omit their going through a prostate biopsy and then just follow their PSA. Very different story if, for say, the guy's prostate size was much smaller. Say it was a 25 gram prostate, now this person has a 23% chance of having any intermediate risk prostate cancer and having unfavorable intermediate risk prostate cancer goes up towards 4%. They may want to do something. They may want to go forward with the biopsy. 
if the MRI was a Pyrads 4, meaning it's the radiologist says it's somewhat suspicious, now the chances go up to about 60% and 20%, and most men would definitely have a biopsy. So what we looked at in our series is using this risk calculator, we can save about half the men that we come in, uh, come in to see us for elevated PSA. So using these tools like MRI, like prostate health index, and putting them all together into a risk calculator, we see that we can spare about half the men that come to see us for elevated PSA from ever undergoing a biopsy. And in follow-up studies, we look to see, well, are we right? Does anyone eventually develop a prostate cancer that we might miss in this strategy? And we found in those studies recently presented at the American Logic meeting, your association meetings, that indeed these nomograms work, that only about one to 2% of men who decide not to have a biopsy will eventually need a biopsy and find cancer. So use of these tools in our practices are very helpful um, and putting all the information together is very helpful to make individualized decisions about next steps in your care. Again, this is publicly available through the Polsky Urologic Cancer website um, and also available through uh, a direct link that we'll put into, the, uh, um, into this video. Thank you.